Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Former SSL Wealth Advisor Jean and Panton denied bail. Curfew declared in Tucker St. James. And later in sports, Kamal Hitman Russell returns to the ring. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shane Masters and here are the details. We begin this afternoon with a developing story. Gene and Panton, the former Stocks and Securities Limited wealth advisor who was charged with swindling millions of dollars from over 40 clients, including Sprint Ledger and Usain Bolt, has been denied bail. Ms. Panton was denied bail when she appeared in the Supreme Court this morning. She is to return to court on April 19. When the matter was called up, her attorney, Tamika Harris, in urging the court to grant her client bail, reiterated that Panton is not a flight risk. Ms. Harris, in her part heard application, told the court that the additional medical report, which was required last week to support her claim, stated that Ms. Panton has been suffering from some form of illnesses for some time. Justice Shelley Williams, in denying the application, noted that neither the additional document, the affidavit containing newspapers, newspaper clippings and photo explaining her her illness nor the medical report addressed anything that would prevent her from being in custody. A plea and case management hearing was also set for June 15. A 48-hour curfew has been imposed in the Tucker community of Granville in St. James. Now this after gangsters set several houses ablaze in the area Wednesday night. Firefighters had to seek police escort after gunshots rang out when they attempted to extinguish the blaze. The community has been tense since the incident. Now, the boundaries of the curfews are north along Tucker Main Road from Marina's Seafood Place to the intersection with Chambers Drive, east along Chambers Drive from the intersection with Tucker Main Road to Granville Police Station at the southern boundary, south continuing along Chambers Drive from Granville Police Station to the intersection with Fair Farfield Main Road and west along Far that's rather Fairfield Main Road from the intersection with Chambers Drive to Sabrina Seafood Place at Tucker Main Road. There is growing concern about the number of students who are involved in gang activities which lead to violence in schools. Karen Simpson reports. The Jamaica Association of Principals of Secondary Schools says teachers and school administrators are being overwhelmed by an increase in violent incidents in schools. The Kingston Western Police arrested and charged four students last week in relation to acts of violence at Denham Town High School. President of JAPS, Lindvan Wright, says while steps have been taken to reduce the number of students engaged in gang activities in schools, the issue is still of concern. We have always had that kind of thing. We have coordinated and, and, and got rid of some, or, or at least minimized some of what is happening. But if you listen to some of the persons out there who are involved in crime, it's, it's many people in school. So many, some schools, one another, are struggling with it because of how we have placed students and where some of the schools are located. But it's not a strange thing to administrators that many of these youngsters are part of them. No, it's not strange. Mr. Wright says schools have been implementing measures to deal with students involved in violence. For some persons, it's, it's getting into social work they're available. It's getting psychologists where we can get them because those are, those are in short supply and psychiatrists. It is some of them, it's suspension. Some of them, it's getting the police involved. Others, it's having sessions with them to engage them about these The guidance departments are involved. But as I said, it's overwhelming, so we can look to the team move on and just getting work. Kerry and Simpson for TVJ News. The St. Anne police are frantically trying to find new ways to root out criminal elements from volatile communities in the parish. While a state of public emergency has been declared for the entire parish, the police believe sports can go a far way in bringing warring factions together in peace. Head of, crime, head of the Crime Division in St. Anne, DSP Linton Bailey, made that declaration at a function in the parish recently. We are looking at our hot spots, like steer tone. We'll be embarking on some sporting activity there to see if we can get our youth who are prone to violence to at least build some discipline and respect for each other, somewhere they can meet and greet. DSP Bailey went further in explaining why it would work for the young people in Steertown. 
we had a situation up there some time ago and one of the comments the obvious comments that were made is that some of these people did not see each other for months because of the violence and the areas in which they resided so we are looking at that to restart it in our near future the ministry of national security plans to spend over 5.9 billion dollars to undertake to undertake six major projects in the 2023-24 fiscal year among them is the construction of two police divisional headquarters in st catherine and westmoreland andrea chisholm reports 465 million dollars has been budgeted to start building a new police divisional headquarters in West Maland. The aim is to complete 20% of the facility in the fiscal year. Similarly, 315 million has been set aside to start building a police divisional headquarters for St. Catherine North. 5% of that facility is set for completion in the financial year. 770 million has been allocated to continue the security strengthening project which includes the purchasing of a database and installing the case management and station records management system the aim of the project is to help increase the conviction rate for murders there were 166 reported murders since the start of the year up to february 20 a roughly 22 percent reduction in the meantime, $323 million will go towards building a forensic pathology autopsy suite and over $3.1 billion to buy ships and improve coastal surveillance. Cybersecurity initiatives will also be strengthened with a $900 million allocation. The Jamaica Constabulary Force will continue to buy software and hardware while training staff to carry out required duties. The Jamaica Eye Project is critical to that program. Andrea Chisholm, TVJ News. And it's time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. More stories when we return. Welcome back to the Midday News. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie is lamenting the increase in mental health cases at infirmaries. He's promising swift action to address the issue. Over 1,000 Jamaicans are currently living in the 16 infirmaries across the island. But some of these persons have mental health issues. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says the situation is worsening. He says employees of infirmaries are not trained to treat mental health cases. I remember going, I'm not going to say which one, going to an infirmary and I saw where they have to lock away at least three or four of the residents in an area by themselves because of the mental health challenge that they pose. And this administration is cognizant of that because the Prime Minister have been speaking about the mental health challenge of the country. Mr. McKenzie says the COVID-19 pandemic made the situation worse. Because of COVID, we put in restrictions. Some of the restrictions that we put in was to stop visits from taking place. We stop accepting new residents. We stop allowing the residents to go out on field trips. But he says the restrictions had some benefit because only 15 people in the infirmaries across the country died. Mr. McKenzie says the government is exploring the possibility of employing a psychiatric nurse aide in the system to deal with these cases. He also says come April 1, the Ministry of Local Government will be going back to the resumption of full-time visits. So we're opening the infirmary. We're going to be allowing visits. But I want to say to you that we must still maintain and observe the protocols that we put in just as if COVID is still around. And we are expecting to see greater improvements in our infirmaries. In the meantime, Mr. McKenzie says plans are also in place to improve the overall conditions of these infirmaries. All infirmaries in Jamaica under this administration have received significant benefits. None 
has escaped our improvements. We have brought in generator, all infirmaries in Jamaica. Not a cheap generator. Not an in-between generator. A top-of-the-line generator in all infirmaries. So when the power gone, they don't have to be running to find kitchen lamp and candle and bottle torch to provide lighting. Hal Shane Burke reporting for TVJ News. An urgent appeal this afternoon for assistance. It comes after a tenement dwelling went up in flames in the early hours of Friday morning in Standpipe, St. Andrew. It's not clear what started the fire. However, TVJ News understands that eight houses and three businesses were destroyed in the early morning blaze, leaving an adults and children, counting some 30 people, homeless. Now we spoke to Dominique Bihari, a victim of the fire. But my hear my son call out and say, Mommy, you fired the road in your room. Fired in the living room. So I say, Fire. So when I jump up now and pull my room door, when I come out in the living room, all I see a fire. By the time I turn back and go back in my room for kind of save something, it is too late. Now, while other occupants of the property were able to save some clothing and appliances, Ms. Bahari says she was not able to. I stood up in the house and my boyfriend turned to me and said, Dominique, what are you doing? The lamp of my hand and him dragged me out of the fire. I didn't save nothing. But I thank God that I'm alive. Yeah, I didn't have a shop. I lose everything. I lose my shop, my source to live in, I lose everything, but I have life. She is now appealing for help from the elected representatives or corporate Jamaica. I just want them to step in and do what they can do. Fire units from the York Park, Half a Tree and the Trenchtown Fire Stations responded to the blaze. The cost of the damage is not yet known. And it's now time for the Business Minute. Here's Al Shane Burke. Statin is reporting that in January, output prices for producers in the mining and quarrying industry decreased by 0.5%, while prices increased by 0.6% in the manufacturing industry. The decline in the index for the mining and quarrying was mainly attributed to declines in bauxite mining and alumina processing, which fell by 0.5%. At the same time, the increase in the index for the manufacturing industry of 0.6% was largely attributed to increases in the index for refined petroleum products, chemicals and chemical products, and food, beverages and tobacco. Frontier has added three new scheduled non-stop flights from three major American cities to Montego Bay. They are St. Louis, Denver and Chicago Midway. The flights started on Thursday. Each flight will operate three times per week, totaling nine new non-stop flights per week. We're very excited. Uh, what we're looking at is nine new non-stop flights per week uh, with Denver, St. Louis and Chicago. We're particularly excited about Denver because that's one of the busiest airports in the United States and as a matter of fact, one of the busiest airports in the world. And it does allow a lot of connecting traffic out of many of those mountain states like Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, of course, Denver is in Colorado, so that state, uh, Utah, and so on. So it opens up a whole new demographic and gives them an opportunity to have easier access uh, to destination Jamaica. And that's very important uh, for efforts to continue to diversify the flow of visitors to the island. So it's very, very good, very positive news for Jamaica. Further afield, U.S. President Joe Biden has nominated former MasterCard CEO Ajay Banga to lead the World Bank. He will replace President David Malpass, who is stepping down four years into his five-year term. The World Bank is a group of 187 nations that lends money to developing countries to help reduce poverty. And that's it for the Business Minute. And now for the top regional and international stories. Criminal gangs in Haiti have openly established their own toll stations to collect money from road users traveling by car or motorcycle. 
in defiance of police and government authorities in several parts of the Caribbean country torn apart by deep political and humanitarian crisis. Leaders of several drivers' unions have denounced the tactic by the gangs to impose the illegal toll which travelers are forced to pay for safe passage on the roads they've taken control of. They are often demanded to pay the equivalent of hundreds of U.S. dollars to be allowed to proceed. Further afield, today marks one year since Russia began its unprovoked offensive on Ukraine. Ukraine's President Vladimir Volinsky has hailed his nation's year of invincibility. In a televised address, he said Ukraine would do everything to win this year. The U.S. has marked the one-year anniversary by announcing new sanctions aimed at undermining Moscow's ability to wage war in Ukraine and a $2 billion package of additional weaponry. On Thursday, the UN General Assembly approved a resolution that condemns the Russian invasion, calling for a withdrawal of Moscow's troops with 141 votes in favor, 7 against and 32 abstentions. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Karian Simpson. And we head to a quick break. When we come back, Jordan Ford will have your midday sports support.